As you get older, bikes like adventure bikes, cruisers, touring machines do start to look a little bit more appealing. But I'm the sort of guy that really loves speed, I love handling, and I don't care how old I am, I'm always going to want a bike which is fast and handles. But there is a compromise. The Ducati Diavel is listed as a, a sporty tourer full of tech. Sounds quite interesting. I've borrowed this bike for the last week from Ducati UK. Join me for a ride. I'll tell you all about it and we'll see if this is the sort of thing which could tickle my fancy. Chopsy, roll the intro. Mmm, tickle my fancy it could. So, the Ducati Diavel. <laughs> She's not shy of this bike. As I said at the beginning, if I were to get a cruiser, there's two prerequisites. It's got to be quick, it's got a handle. And this bike ticks both of those boxes. It is a, this has a 1260cc Testa Strata engine, I think it is. Testa Strata, I think. That's the one with the DVT. No, not deep vein thrombosis, Ducati valve timing. So it's got sort of the variable valve timing, the Ducati version of. I think actually it's the same motor which was in the old V2 Multistrada. It's that lump, you know, a proven lump, absolutely proven lump. This engine's been around for donkey's years and it's been refined, refined over the years. So you have 160 horsepower of Ducati's finest horsepower and 121 newton meters of torque. So it is a glunchy. The great thing about this bike though, and I think the reason it handles so well is because it only weighs, only, 121 kilos dry. So when you compare that to the Triumph Rocket, which weighs nearly 300 kilos, you start to see why this thing might be a little bit more nimble in the twisties. It's undeniable that riding a bike like this, it feels great. If you feel a million dollars, I've never, I don't care what sports bike you've got, you know, the H2, whatever it is, you don't get that same feeling of being cool <laughs> as what you do as riding a cruiser like this. I don't know what it is about it, but you just feel cool riding it. And I think that is one of the things I really love about this. Absolutely love that. Look at me. <laughs> hey, that's a big boy. Another great thing about riding the cruiser is you don't feel like you should be riding at a million miles an hour. You're much more content just to cruise on it, funnily enough. But, you know, I, I like just coming out for a cruise, but my riding, I think, always ends up with a, a sporty section of road or some part of the road when you want to really push the bike on, get your lick on a little bit. And other cruisers, are found to be a little bit lacking like the Harleys and the Motor Goodsies like the Audace and, and those big cruisers they're also great actually and you can push those on and get a bit of a lick on but then you run out of ground clearance very quickly on those you know it's, it's not a super sport it's not a middleweight naked you know it takes it's a different sensation to push it into the bends especially with your feet forward. It is different, but they are still rewarding. They are still very rewarding to push it into the corners, get a lick on, bend it over a little bit, and come on the power. And, and it does squirm a little bit, you know. It's, it's, the suspension is sort of taut on this. It's not a soft, wallowy thing at all. This, compared to the, the Triumph, compared to the Rocket, 
this you can feel the texture in the tarmac much more you know this it doesn't just ride over it you can't actually feel what you're riding on you can actually feel the texture of the tarmac especially on this road because it is extremely bumpy the suspension is quite stiff on this which is why it handles I mean, Ducati market this as they do three different versions of this bike this is the one they market as the sportiest of the three so this has the most torque suspension this one also has the forged wheels as well so lightweight wheels to make it a little bit more nimble and it really is it is surprisingly nimble and I think actually handles slightly better than the Rocket 3 a few other reviews I've seen of this bike have complained that it's not very comfortable. Now, I can see why they may say it's not very comfortable. Um, the seat is nicely sculpted, it really fits around your ass, but because you've with your legs forward, it does mean your back is sort of angled. Your back is at an angle, and if you hit any potholes in the road, because of the way the suspension is on here, I don't think there's a huge amount of movement on the rear shock. So if you do hit a big bump, you can actually get quite a, a big smack transferred to your backside and into your back because of the position. And that's something I found on, on all cruisers really, when you've got the feet forward position. I mean, you can't even really stand up in the pegs. You have to sort of brace yourself and lift. You can stand up, but you've got to take all the weight on you. It's not easy to stand up and get off the seat when you've got your feet in this forward position. So if you hit a big bump in the road, it can jar through your back so you've got to bear that in mind another thing with the Diavel because it is a big V-twin you get a lot of grunt but it's also a little bit vibey this bike it, I don't think this V-twin motor is as refined as some of its competition I think the, KT, the big V-twin KTM's are much more usable in the bottom area of the rev range Below 3,000 revs, if you give this a bit of welly, so a third gear, 2,500 revs, it has a fair few vibrations. And also when you go above sort of 5,000 revs, 6,000 revs, it's also quite vibey at that point. So if you're sat on the motorway at 70 miles an hour on here, I rode this back from Ducati UK, which is a two and a half hour ride, mainly on the motorway. I was doing sort of 70 to 80, you get a lot of vibrations through the seat. So on an extended period on the motorway, you can really feel it in your backside with the vibrations. So this bike, as a bike to go touring on, a bike to do motorway work on, I'd, I'd say forget it. This is a bike really suited for sort of doing under 60, cruising around these sorts of roads, you know, where you're not just gonna be sat at prolonged high speed. So that is something to bear in mind with this machine. This is what I'm talking about the handling, that you can push it into the bed. You've got to be a little bit brave. You've got to do a little bit of counter steering on the bars. Use the rear brake to sort of set your speed going into the corners so you don't unsettle the suspension too much. But you know, you can have fun. I've been out with Greg on his 890R <laughs> and uh, obviously it's not, it's not a scalpel but it's surprising just how much speed and how fast you can go on this bike if you start to push it a little bit. What, you, what tends to happen, it gets to a point and I think it's when you reach the edge of the huge rear tyre when it just doesn't want to lay down anymore and uh, that's the only thing that can happen on this. You can get yourself to that position whereby it's quite flickable and it will change direction but it will only lean over to a point and then you really have to put some leverage on the bars and if you find yourself running wide on the corner and you've got it as over as far as it will go it's not a particularly nice feeling but saying that I think it is more sporty and handles better than the Rocket 3 which also handles fantastically well for what it is but it's a little bit sharper and I think that is due to the, the lighter weight and slightly more sporty tyres and suspension. Anyway, let's slow it down a little bit. This is about cruising. This isn't about rushing around, but I just want to point out you can do that. 
and that's the thing this bike could be my only machine in the garage because it delivers enough performance in a straight line and on the twisties to satisfy my hooliganism my hooliganist nature so let's try it on my favorite little set of twisty bends i keep banging on about how it handles let's have a look now this road has actually just been reopened again they've been doing some work down here so let's see what they've done the only time the feet forward position is weird when you're going very slow speed it is a little bit odd lay it in you just have to pick your line very carefully full electronics obviously traction control blah -de blah blah various modes you can adjust it all as well <laughs> that's it what I mean I mean it's pretty for a big old cruiser you would not expect it and that is what I love about it actually you get behind a sports bike and they're like bloody hell who is this guy sticking on my ass on his cruiser <laughs> I love that feeling of surprising other bikes with what you're riding uh, how fast how they handle and this is uh, i think the top of the list of the surprise bikes for handling it's not all fantastic you know i'm banging on about how good it is it's not perfect there are some things which could be improved upon the mirrors it's, a lot of it is due to the vibrations the mirrors you know you can't they're lovely quality beautifully finished billet mirrors but <laughs> they're very vibey you can tell the bike's vibey by the by the mirrors you know there's it's a lot of vibration in the mirrors there yeah the vibrations through the seat which i mentioned already it doesn't like to go the engine doesn't like to pull below sort of 3000 revs and even that 3000 the high gear six it's quite vibrant you can really feel that vibration right through the seat as well so it's not like you're just getting it in the mirrors you're getting it in the bars it's right at the very core of your ass you're getting those vibrations so i might like it the switch gear is nice it looks very nice but i find this ducati switch gear a bit fiddly i'm the only one who seems to mention this i don't know if I, it's my fat fingers but to, to get into the menu you've got to push the inside of the button and you end up pushing this button and it, it's just awkward i find it awkward navigating the menus and that's the same on all the new Ducatis which have this switch gear I'm not a massive fan of it the bike also has cruise control so you've got cruise control here on these buttons one thing with the cruise control though which I found very odd normally with cruise control you push the throttle forward and you can deactivate the cruise control you can't on this there's no push forward action to deactivate so if you're on the motorway you have to either touch the brakes which is always annoying to touch the brakes when you're on the motorway or you have to turn it off on the button here no push forward cancellation on the lip on the throttle grip very odd i think that's about it for dislikes really there's not much to dislike on this bike there's really not the gearbox is also very nice it's easy to find neutral there's no quick shifter and blipper you know this is a manual you have to change manually on this bike which i think is in keeping with the design of the whole cruiser yeah the gear lever you have to be precise it's quite a, a big movement between the gears you know it's not short little you've got a, it's quite a big throw on the lever but it's you know it's a nice feeling gearbox you do sometimes when you change down you know have to give it a little blip of the throttle to to match the revs a little bit but it's all part of the experience it's all part of the ride what i do like is it's very easy to find neutral it's uh, it is it's quite a sweet gearbox one of the things I also really love about this bike is the fit and finish. It looks fabulous. It looks absolutely fabulous. I think it's one of the best finished Ducatis in the range. What we're doing is set, we'll pull over and we'll just go around the features and, and, and some of the details of this machine because it is exquisite. Exquisite. There she is, looking beautiful in the sunshine. There's a couple of different versions of the XD Avel. This is the new Black Star version, which is the top of the range version. The Black Star has the forged wheels, which I mentioned before, which look absolutely 
beautiful. They're forged wheels, but then they're painted a nice gloss black. Love it. As well as the forged wheels, the Black Star has this lovely paint job. These red highlights on the tank, the silver, the gunmetal, and the matte black with the red highlights. I absolutely love the colours on this bike. I think it looks amazing. The Black Star also has this lovely suede seat. Oh, that's quite warm. I think the actual exhaust goes underneath of the seat. So the bottom of the seat, there's a lot of heat reflective material on it, but I've not noticed excessive heat riding this bike. A few people have said if you found it hot, I haven't, but when I put my hand on that seat, it does feel a little bit warm now, it's been sat there. If you come around the other side, it's the same story, gloss black engine, even gloss black cylinders, and then you've got lovely red rockers front and rear. That is just a, a black star edition with the red rockers, love it. The bike's belt drive, so it's not shaft drive like the Rocket, it's belt drive, but that's all good because the belt, you know, you don't have to maintain the belt so much. Um, you know, you don't have to oil the chains and you don't have to oil them or anything. So belt drive, not sure how long it lasts, not sure how much it is to replace, but it is relatively maintenance free. The rear of the bike is a little bit special. That huge rear Pirelli tyre, that back end, the back lights, and then, of course, you've got one of these uh, arrangements with the lower mudguard. Pirelli Rosso 3 tyres. Yeah, we're getting a good use out of those tyres. Exhaust looks nice. It's a little bit quiet. I'd like a little bit more volume, which is unusual because all the latest Ducatis I've ridden have actually all been very loud. This one could do with a little bit more volume standard so a pipe may be needed bike also has all this lovely arrangement with the radiator and the oil cooler a nice little x below on the uh, like belly pan now i think this is the same dash which is actually on the v2 panigale the hyper motard it's like the smaller tft which ducati do i think it's in line with the bike it's it's a little bit small to read some things at times and an amazing thing about this bike for a ducati look there it's got a blooming fuel gauge. Hoorah! Illuminated switch gear with an X here for X Diavel. I think that's more by uh, luck than design though. And then the menu buttons. And this is what I find a little bit fiddly. It's going in here and up and down and, and you hit this one. And it, yeah. Another slight criticism. It's a shame they didn't run all the wiring through the bars like they've done with the Rocket. You've got the wiring running outside of the bars. If that had gone inside of the bars, like on the Rocket, it would have made it a much nicer, much tidier feel to the whole switch gear. So the XD Evel, I really like this bike. I, I find myself drawn more and more to cruisers these days. I think it, I don't know if it's an age thing, I don't know what it is, but I think as you get older, you get more and more drawn to this sort of bike. And if I had to get a cruiser, as I said at the beginning, it would have to be sporty. It would have to handle, it would have to be comfortable. And it would definitely be a, a be between the Diavel and the new Triumph Rocket. I'd have to ride the Rocket again to let you know definitively which one I prefer. I have a feeling this one handles slightly better than the Rocket, but the Rocket is a little bit more comfortable and perhaps a bit faster. I don't know, but they're very, very close. It would have to be a back-to-back -back comparison to be able to decide which one of these two would take my money. They're a very similar price. The Rocket is just over 20 grand. This Black Star's 21. The S version of the XD Avel is 20, so the same price as the Rocket. So uh, money, there's not much between the bikes. It would all be down to feel. Fit and finish is probably not much in it as well. The, the Triumph is also built beautifully, but the Takati could have the very, very slight edge on fit and finish over the Triumph. But uh, perhaps it'll be a back-to-back -back comparison of the two a bit later on in the year to help me decide when I'm ready to spy my Cruiser. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. As always, really appreciate it. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. It does keep the YouTube gods happy. And if you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing because I do a lot of reviews like this, riding all sorts of different bikes and also stuff in the garage, maintenance jobs, build series on bikes and stuff like that. So there's always something entertaining to watch. But thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> Oh, this
Drown, boy. I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. I'm reaching that age where bikes like super sports and super motos start to lose their appeal and things like cruisers start to become on your radar. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, wind.